Again, welcome. My name is Yolanda Galloway, and I am a health and wellness coordinator with the Department of Parks and Recreation. Before we begin the, the program tonight, I want to share a few uh, housekeeping tips with you. First, I want to draw your attention to the mute button, and this will um, allow you to mute yourself throughout the program, and it will allow you to uh, eliminate any distractions throughout the evening. Next, I want to draw your attention to the camera icon. This will allow you to turn your camera off or on, um, but we ask that you remember that anything that um, we're able to see on the screen could be, uh, pose any type of distractions. And we want to make sure that we can focus on the program that's being provided on tonight. Next, I want to draw your attention to the option to pin a participant. Um, so to do this, you will need to click on the show participants icon that you see that's highlighted here on the screen. In the participants column, select the individual you want to view on your screen, then click or tap the three dots icon to reveal a men uh, to reveal a menu. From the drop down menu, select pin or pin for me. The pinned participant becomes the focus in your view and only your view, um, regardless of who is speaking. And then to unpin, you would repeat these three steps. If you want to pin an additional participant, you'll follow those uh, same steps. Please note, if you are in a web browser, the PowerPoint presentation will be in a smaller window at the top or bottom of your screen. Next, I want to draw your attention to the closed caption or the live caption. So what you will do here is um, <clears throat> um, you will click on the three dots for more options. Then you can scroll down and find the option that says turn on live captions. Then you will start to see captions at the bottom of your screen. You may choose to turn this feature on if you need it. Next is the chat icon. <clears throat> and so this will allow you to ask questions throughout the program. It's a way for you to engage with us. To type a question, you would just click on the icon like the one you see on the screen to bring up the chat box and it should take you to what you see next on the screen. Once you see the chat box, as you see here, there will be a space for you to type your question, hit enter, and we will see your question on the screen. Please ask your questions throughout the program and engage with us, and we look forward to great discussion tonight. So without further ado, I wanna introduce our trained professional for the evening. Two is a registered dietitian and licensed dietitian nutritionist for Giant Foods. She was born and raised in Montgomery County. She received her Bachelor of Science in Dietetics at the University of Maryland College Park and is currently working towards her Master's in Dietetics Administration from Utah State University. Two especially loves helping the aging population live their best life. When she isn't discovering new whole, grain, uh, whole grains to add to her plate, she's fully embracing the millennial mom life at home and in Giant Foods Nutrition Made Easy blog. In her off time, she enjoys watching her succulents and sons grow. Welcome to. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, so let me go ahead and share my screen. Please bear with me for just one second. Sure, take your time. And while she's doing that, we will remind you to mute yourself to eliminate any distractions. All right. Okay, can everyone see this clearly? Awesome. Yes, we are good. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for having me today. Like Yolanda said, my name is Tu Win, and I am a registered dietitian on the Healthy Living team here at Giant. So I, uh, for the next 30 minutes, I am going to share my seven best tips for promoting and maintaining a healthy uh, plant-based eating pattern. And I'm going to also show you some 
uh, of my team's cart worthy picks that make it easy. So I want you all to just be able to take it in, sit back and relax. At the end of the presentation, I'll be giving you a list of all of our tips and a shopping list of all of the products that I mentioned. So you don't need to feel like you need to take notes throughout the presentation. I also love to make this as interactive as possible, so please feel free to interrupt me at any time with any of your questions or comments. And then, of course, you can do it in the chat box as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So today we are going to be talking about plant based eating. We're going to talk what does plant based actually mean and we're also going to be talking about the benefits of leaning towards a plant-based diet. Additionally, we'll discuss tips for eating, shopping, and living with or towards a plant-based diet. So first, starting off with tip number one. Tip number one is going to explore what a plant-based diet means. So our first tip is the term plant-based is really specific to you. So first up, what is plant-based eating? So like I said, that term plant-based, it's rather vague, but generally it refers to products or eating styles that are centered around plants. So the typical American diet is really centered around meat. So think about when you say, what's for dinner? The response is usually chicken or fish, right? So plant-based eating, it flips this and it makes plants the center of our plates. Plant-based eaters, they may call themselves by many names and that's because there are different degrees of plant-based eating and the levels of animal-based foods that they will eat. So starting off with the flexitarian, the flexitarian, they eat certain meats and seafoods, but this is really driven by preference. So there's not a religious reason or a health reason why they're not eating meat. It's really about personal preference. Then we have pescatarians. Pescatarians eat no meat except for seafood, but they also eat dairy and eggs. Then we have our vegetarians um, who don't eat any meat, but they do consume dairy and eggs as well. And then lastly, we have our vegans who eat no animal products at all, including meat, dairy, eggs, and honey. So a 2018 survey from Gallup showed that about 5% of Americans say they're vegetarians and 3% say that they're vegans. Now, that being said, you don't have to fit into one of these categories to be called a plant-based eater. Making plants more of a focus in your meal is really the only requirement. And honestly, this is something that we should all be doing anyway. So if you are following USDA's MyPlate, which you see right here on the screen, you are already plant-based. So 75% of this plate is already geared towards plant-based foods, which brings me to tip number two. Plant-based eating, it has many benefits when it comes to our health. So tip number two will explore what those health benefits associated with plant-based eating are. So in general, Plant-based eaters have more fiber in their diets, which makes sense because plant-based foods like nuts, seeds, and legumes are very high in fiber. Plant-based eaters also tend to have less saturated fat um, intake as saturated fat is mainly found in animal products. And plant-based diets have also been tied to a lower risk of many chronic diseases. There's one life insurance company, they're called Health IQ. They're actually taking notice and they're offering up to 40% cheaper rates for plant-based eaters who meet their high health literacy and healthy lifestyle goals. So this is really interesting because we can hope that other insurance companies will follow this trend as well. 
So plant-based eaters, they also have higher levels of many nutrients because again, plants are a great source of vitamins and minerals. So they have a higher nutrient intake of fiber, magnesium, potassium, vitamins C and E, and folate. So when it comes to plant-based eating, people are often concerned. Sir, do we have a question? Okay. So when it comes to plant-based eating, people are often concerned about lacking in certain nutrients. So the, these are those most notable nutrients, but are often more of a concern for those who don't eat eggs or dairy. But here are some options that are 100% plant-based that should be included in plant-based eating. So first we have vitamin D. So vitamin D, it comes from regular sun exposure but it can also come from fortified foods such as plant-based milk and orange juice, also mushrooms that have been exposed to vitamin D, and then of course vitamin D supplementation as well. Then we have vitamin B12. This um, can be found, this is uh, lacking for those who are mostly plant-based eaters and not eating animal protein because B12 is found in animal products. So if you are doing plant-based, vitamin B12 can be found in nutritional yeast, and it can also be found in fortified breakfast cereals, meat alternatives like um, the Beyond Burger or the Impossible Burger, and then of course supplements as well. Then for our minerals, calcium. So calcium you can find in fortified plant milks and juices, tofu that's made with calcium sulfate, and leafy greens. Then we have our trace minerals such as iron, but you can get that from beans and lentils. Um, zinc you can find in nuts grains, soy products and legumes, and iodine, which you can find in salt and prepared foods. And then lastly, our fatty acids, those omega-3s. So most of the time we associate omega-3 with fish, but if you're not eating fish, where can you get it from? Well, you can get it from flaxseed, you can get it from walnuts, soy, and marine algae. So these nutrients, they may be of concern to those who eliminate animal-based animal foods from their diet. So I do recommend that you meet with a dietitian to discuss how to supplement your food if you are going more plant-based. But there is one nutrient that we don't need to worry about, which brings us to tip number three, which is Plant-based diet equals plenty of protein. So protein, it's the elephant in the room when we talk about plant-based diets. The biggest issue that comes up with plant-based diets is protein. But like most Americans who get more than enough protein, the same exists for plant-based eaters. It really is not a nutrient of concern. There's protein in many foods, including some of our fruits and vegetables, which you see right here on this slide. So beans, legumes, legumes, nuts, and seeds, they have about nine grams of protein per serving. Whole grains like wheat, quinoa, wild rice, and farro has about six grams per half cup. And then even vegetables like broccoli, spinach, and kale, they can give you three grams of protein per half cup. Now, another protein concern when eating plant-based is the idea of complete proteins. So a complete protein is a food that contains the nine essential amino acids that our body can't produce on its own. So for many years, it was thought that you needed to combine plant proteins to form a complete protein. But now that we now we know that as long as you're eating a balanced diet overall, you don't have to worry about pairing protein sources at mealtime. As long as you're eating balanced, you're going to be getting those complete proteins. 
So these are some plant-based proteins that you can be on the lookout at the grocery store. You know, peanut butter or nut butters are great sources of plant-based protein. You can look out for tofu, nuts like pistachios or almonds or peanuts, green lentils. Um, if you're looking for a salty, crunchy snack, they have these dried chickpeas, which are going to be a great source of protein, and then shelled edamame. You can find this in the freezer section and you can just heat it up and then that'll be a great protein source that's all plant-based. So switching gears, eating a plant-based diet is not only good for our health, it's also good for the planet. So tip number four will discuss the environmental benefits of plant-based eating. So plant-based eating also has an environmental impact. Plant-based diets have been cited as having less of an environmental impact because they have a smaller carbon footprint due to less greenhouse gas emission. They use less water to produce one pound of, um, sorry, they use less water to produce. It actually requires about 100 times more water to produce a pound of animal protein than a pound of grain protein. And then it also requires less land, which is a contributor to deforestation and desertification. But most importantly, the most important thing that all of us can do for the environment, whether we eat meat or not, is to stop wasting food. Food waste is a huge contributor to greenhouse gas emissions and other damaging environmental concerns. And as much as 40% of food goes uneaten in the US, we throw away about $165 billion in food every year. Um, and fruits and vegetables are the most likely to be thrown out, followed by dairy and then meat. So why this is a problem is because food waste that decomposes in landfills, it releases methane, which is a greenhouse gas that is at least 28 times more potent than carbon dioxide. So it really represents one of the greatest possibilities for individuals, for companies, for communities to contribute to that reversing of global warming, and also at the same time, feeding more people, increasing economic benefits, and preserving our threatened ecosystem. So the easiest way to implement this is to start meal planning. And we do have a webinar that's all about meal planning. So if you do want to learn more about that, please feel free to reach out. Okay, so moving on to tip number five. Tip number five is to try something new. So with plant-based eating being super trendy right now, there are so many new products that are out there that you can add to your cart to make plant-based eating exciting. So let's take a look at some of them. Okay, so first we have nutritional yeast. Has anyone tried nutritional yeast before? Okay. Yes, oh. I. Oh, wonderful. We have a couple who have tried nutritional yeast. That's awesome. So nutritional yeast, it's um, deactivated yeast. So it's not the same yeast that you would use in bread. It won't make anything rise and it's not alive, um, but it's deactivated, but it's actually a great source of vitamin B12. And remember, we said that if you are cutting animal products out from your diet completely, you need that vitamin B12. So this is a great thing that you can look out for. It's that uh, yellow bottle that you see right there on the screen. It has kind of a cheesy flavor. So my favorite way is to add it on popcorn. Um, but I'm curious to know if anyone else out there has a favorite. Oh, and you can feel free to type it in the chat box. I didn't mean to put anyone on the spotlight. <laughs> um, but there's other Two, products. I'm sorry. Could you repeat your question? There was um, some, some background noise. What was your last question? Could you repeat that? 
Yeah, I was just wondering for those who said that they've tried nutritional yeast before, what is your favorite way of using it? Because I really just use it for my popcorn and I'm curious to know what other ways um, you all like to use it. I've, I've been trying to monitor my dairy consumption. So wherever I would use cheese, I, I go ahead and use it. So pasta, salads, eggs, just about everywhere. Wonderful. That's awesome. Yes, I've heard of people putting it in like their fettuccine Alfredo or their macaroni and cheese so that they get that cheesy flavor. I see Rosalind says scrambled tofu. I use it with chickpea flour for omelets. That's awesome. So those are actually great ideas that I probably will start doing myself. Um, but also on the screen, you see Good Karma. So Good Karma products, they contain omega-3 fatty acids from their flax seeds, but in a milk beverage. So there's lots of things that are out there. I do want to mention, though, that there is a health halo when you hear the word plant-based. So a lot of times you hear plant-based and you might automatically think that it's nutritious for you, but that's not always the case. So take, for example, um, Beyond Beef, those uh, meat alternatives that are plant-based. So even though they're plant-based, which means they're better for our environment, it doesn't necessarily mean it's better for us. So if you look at the nutrition facts label, these plant-based meats, they have just the same amount as set of saturated fat than our regular meat does. And sometimes it even has more sodium than our regular meat. So you just want to make sure you're paying attention still to those food labels. Just because it says it's plant-based doesn't necessarily mean it's healthier for us. But on the screen, you can see there's mushroom jerky, there's fish-free tuna, there's feta that's uh, plant-based. So there's lots of things that are out there that you can try. And two, I see one person had their hand up. I didn't know if it was to say that they had tried um, the yeast or they had a question. Ava, you can come off mute if, if you have a question. Oh, I was just uh, had it because I I had tried nutritional yeast before. Okay, great. All right, just making sure. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so there is one thing I wanted to point out for you all. If you do shop at Giant, we have two rating systems that can help you to shop easier. So the first one is called Guiding Stars. This is a nutrition rating system that reads the food label so you don't have to. Healthier food choices are rewarded one, two, or three stars when they're higher in ingredients that we want. So things like vitamins, minerals, fiber, whole grains, and omega-3s, but also lower in ingredients that we don't want. So saturated fats, sodium, and added sugars. So the more stars that a product has, the healthier the choice it is. Then we also have our impact rating system. It's powered by our friends at How Good. So this is not a nutrition rating system, but instead it tells you the story behind your foods and rates them on their social and environmental impact. So it's all about sustainability. So products are rewarded one, two, or three leaves when they're environmentally friendly, minimally processed, and ethically produced. So the more leaves that a product has, the healthier the choice it is for our planet. Okay, so there's lots of benefits of plant-based eatings. There's lots of products that are out there, but just like everything else in life, we can't expect to jump into something 100% and expect for it to stick, right? So to establish a more plant-based eating pattern, tip number six is to start where you are. 
And that means to start small if you want to go plant based. So rather than saying something like I'm not going to eat meat ever again, maybe reduce those meat portions rather than eliminating. You can swap out the meat in your favorite dishes. So alter your current favorite meals to be more plant based. So say you normally make lasagna with meat sauce. Maybe you can try doing lasagna with sauce and then veggies added to it. Or say you love to do like a chicken stir fry. You can do a stir fry with veggies and tofu or beans or maybe even eggs if you're not vegan. And if you are interested in how to cook tofu, we are having a cook along in April that's doing stir fry with tofu. So I'll show you at the end of this class how you can register for that. Um, another example is chili. So maybe you typically make beef chili. Maybe you can make chili with beans or with lentils instead. So there's lots of little changes that you can make to lean more towards that plant-based eating. You can also focus on one meal or just one day of the week that you can try a plant-based meal. So say you can do meatless Monday, or maybe just for breakfast, you're gonna do plant-based. So again, starting off small, it really does help to make those changes. So speaking of meal planning, Tip number seven, our last tip, is to meal, meal plan for success. So, you know, we always say to be successful in your wellness goals, you need to have a plan, and that includes eating more plant-based. So when it comes to making a plan, the first thing you want to do is pick a specific day each week that you're going to meal plan. So for me, it's on Sundays. Um, but is that going to be the same day that you do your grocery shopping? Or maybe it's a different day. Once you figure that out, you want to grab your tools. So grab your recipes, your calendar, your inventory of all the things that you already have in your refrigerator or your pantry and then also all the grocery store options. So things that are on sale or things that you are looking to buy. And then get started to plan your days. So some questions that you wanna ask yourself. What days will you eat out? So if you don't eat out, that's great. But I know that even if I say I'm not going to eat out, there's probably going to be one meal of the week that I'm going to eat out. So you can plan for that. And then that way you don't buy extra food that's going to go bad and then contribute to that food waste. Um, another question you can ask yourself, what days do you need a quick meal? So maybe you're working late or maybe um, you have your kids or your grandkids practice, sports practice that you um, are going to need something quick? Or are there any other food needs that you need? Maybe, you know, a holiday's coming up and you're going to need more food for that. And put all of those on your meal plan. Then choose your recipes. So will you follow a blueprint schedule? Sometimes that makes it easier to choose recipes. So you can do meat-free Monday, taco Tuesday, pizza Fridays, and then that helps to narrow down the um, recipes to choose from. Then you wanna look at your inventory to make your meal. Did you perhaps buy too many peppers the week before and they're about to go bad? So maybe you plan to make fajitas with those peppers and then buy some rotisserie chicken or you know buy some tofu to make that stir fry. Or if you're not sure what to make with your pantry items, there's a great website. It's allrecipes.com. You enter in all your leftover ingredients and the site will give you recipes based on those items. So you don't need to worry about wasting food. Um, and then lastly, some things that you can think about. Can you double recipes and then freeze some of it for later so that on a busy day, you can just reheat it and have a home cooked meal? Or can you double your protein? Maybe you can batch cook your beans um, so that you have 
have a side for your lunch. Um, so chili is a great example of something that you cook once and you can eat multiple times because you can make a big pot of it. Um, and then what do you need to make that recipe? You need that grocery list, right? So always start off with that grocery list. Make sure you don't go grocery shopping hungry so that you don't get impulsive. And then that way you're able to stick to your list and buy all the ingredients that you need. And then of course you want to make sure you stay inspired so if you're anything like me sometimes you fall into a recipe rut and you keep on making the same things over and over and over again so you want to make sure you have so many recipes to choose from because meal times should be fun so these are some of our favorite websites that you can be on the lookout for to get more inspiration our savory magazine um, you can get the hard copy in store or you can go online to giantfood.com slash savory. Our nutrition made easy blogs always have recipes there as well. Um, Pinterest.com is so full of recipes. You can always just type in plant based and you'll get so many different recipes. Cookinglight.com. And then if you are looking for some meal planning help, there's some apps that are out there. So meal lime and dinner time are some of the nutritionist favorites. Okay, so these are our seven tips for plant based eating all together. So you can feel free to take a screenshot of this. But number one is that plant based is specific to you. Again, little changes go a long way. So you can feel free to, you know, make as many changes as you need or as little changes as you need, but it really depends on you. Um, tip number two is plant based for health. Tip number three is that plant based equals plenty of protein. Uh, tip number four is plant based for the environment. Tip number five is to try something new in the plant based area. Uh, tip number six is to start where you are. And then tip number seven is to meal plan for success. Now here is a shopping list of the products that I talked about today. So if you are looking to add them to your cart, you can again take a screenshot of this and then be on the lookout when you're grocery shopping. Um, but yeah, again, so these are the ones that we talked about today. Okay, and then just a couple ways that you can connect with us nutritionist at Giant. So we do have a podcast. It's called Healthy Living by Giant. So if you'd like to listen to more healthy living topics, anything about plant-based eating, we have episodes on that. These are QR codes, so you can just pull out your camera app and then you can scan the code. It'll take you straight to the podcast. Same thing with our Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, be sure to join our Facebook group. Uh, it's called Healthy Living by Giant, and we post lots of fun, inspirational things on there as well. And then if you'd like to register for more classes, then you can scan this code right here, or you can go to giantfood.com slash nutrition. This is where you can register for our next upcoming cook along where we're going to make we're going to be making a tofu stir fry. So you'll have the support of us nutritionists there if you've never cooked tofu before, um, then it'll be a great learning experience and we can all, you know, learn how to cook it together. Okay, and so that is all that I have for you today. Does anyone have any questions for me? We did have one pop up. They were asking if they could get the slides to review. Um, yes, we're able to provide those in PDF for you to have access and we'll be sure to send that out um, after the program. Perfect. Sorry, I'm trying to shop, stop sharing screen. <laughs> oh, no worries. Any other questions for two tonight? Thank you, two. That was really great information. Um, just being able to understand all the different plant eaters right yeah. um pescatarian vegetarian vegan to be able to understand that because when you know when you host you want to be able to you know provide those options for your guests or your family or what have you as people are you know adopting some of these um, plant-based um, diets or eating habits so yes i completely agree yeah there is a let's see a hen raised and um uh avani i believe 
hand raised. You're welcome to unmute and ask your question. Yes, hi, Avani. Hello, Ivine. Hi, Avani. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I I guess you you did go over the sort of the range of nutritional elements that are available in plants. Uh, I guess I'm wondering, is there should I be following a pattern to get that complete package, so to speak, in, in when I'm thinking about preparing, um, putting my meal plan together to, yeah. to make sure, you know, I guess we take, I take for granted anyway, let me say, when I'm putting together uh, your, your meat-based uh, meal, that what I need will be there. I know I'm going to have my, my the meat protein, the vegetable, the grain, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, do I need to be mindful of my combinations? Gotcha. Yes. So you got it right down right there. So as long as you're focusing, making sure you're getting your protein, your vegetables, your fruits, your grains, then you are all set. Of course, with the protein, you know, you just want to choose those plant based proteins. So things like tofu and beans and lentils um, that can be your source of protein. But as long as you're following uh, my plate and you're getting all those components, you don't need to worry about combining certain things to get those nutrients. You would be getting all of them. And then um, to that point, then just making sure you're getting a variety. So um, try to eat lots of different colors that you can. Try to eat different types of plant proteins if you can um, to make sure you're getting all those nutrients. And, and my second question, if I may. Yes. Um, I, I think I'm also... Um, wanting to be mindful too. I see so much right now and it's exciting in a way. Um, but then I start to think, hmm, packaging, manufacturing, should I be staying away from those and sticking to sort of the produce aisle? Um, you know, you, you did say about the sodium content and I have looked at some of those and thought, yikes. <laughs> um, you know, because my fear is in trying to make it palatable, mm -hmm. you're going to get too chemically in your processing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, is is that a valid concern that I should be having? Yes, I mean, that's totally a valid concern. Um, I would say as long as you're eating it in moderation, that's perfectly fine. Um, so moderation would be, you know, once every couple weeks. Um, because these are items that are more for, uh, so that you don't fall into that rut of, you know, like eating the same thing over and over again. It gives you just another thing that you can try. Um, so exactly like you said, nutritionally, it might not be as good for you. Um, so you can always look for, you know, a black bean burger rather than the Beyond Burger. Um, but if you are looking for something new um, every once in a while, it's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. And there was a question in the chat. I don't, okay, did you see that? Okay. Um, I saw, let me see. I can uh, read it to you. Okay, yes. <laughs> um, Liz asks, how do you use lentils in chili? She's asking if you cook the lentils first. Yeah, so I've done it a couple ways. I've done a recipe where the lentils simmer in the tomato sauce for a few hours, and then that way it cooks in the tomato sauce. And I feel like that was the better way because it kind of started to absorb all those flavors as well. Um, but yes, you can certainly cook the lentils beforehand and then add it afterwards. Awesome, thank you. All right, there are no more hands raised or questions in the chat. Thank you again um, so much. We have a thank you. Liz says thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh -huh. Awesome information, a new topic for us. So I'm so excited of the turnout we had. So I hope this is very beneficial to you all. We definitely want your feedback. So we ask that you complete the survey that you'll receive 24 hours. Um, and if you can complete it within 24 hours, you'll be in entered into a drawing. And I'll try to drop, drop it in the chat um, here before we leave. Um, and if you would like the program recording, it is available upon request. You can send an email 
to myself as I sent you the link or to wellness at pgparks.com. And then we invite you to join our last program for National Nutrition Month, which is this Thursday, and it's a cooking demonstration. And it is actually going to be a plant-based uh, recipes. And so that is going to be Thursday, March 31st at 6 p.m. So we hope to see some of you all, you know, come back. All right. So if you want to hang around, we have a short video and I'll try to drop that survey in the chat. Hope you all have a good night. Thank you for joining us for National Nutrition Month. For more videos to help you make healthier choices, visit the Department of Parks and Recreation's online resource center at PG Parks virtual library at wellness.pgparks.com. Until next time, be healthy, be well.